we are trying to understand consumer preferences of people living in a country. And for that, I introduced you to the concept of community indifference curves. And we assume that these exist for each nation and are well-defined. And to make life simple for ourselves, we, as we look at one consumer, that person's preferences, and whatever applies to one person applies to millions of consumers living within a country. In the last lecture video, we have made the following assumptions about preferences of a consumer. The first one being rationality and perfect knowledge. The second one being completeness. The third one being transitivity. And the fourth one being non satiety and in this video what we do is based on these assumptions we examine the properties of indifference curves and also define what is an indifference suppose you are looking at two goods clothing which is on the x-axis and food which is on the y-axis and suppose you are given a point like two three and you can plot this point 2, 3. Remember, the first number represents the good on the x-axis, which is units of clothing. So clothing is 2 units, and food is 3 units. And so we get this point A. And now what we do is we divide this diagram into the following quadrants. Let me just do that and let me just straighten these lines and move them at an appropriate place. There you have it. So now what we have done is we have divided this into four quadrants. Now consider any point which happens to be in this zone. And let's call any point on this zone as F. Now, given the assumptions we have made, how would you compare F and A? Under F, you'll have more of clothing or and food relative to A. And so because of non-satiety, this must be true. Now look at another zone. Let's call this G, this entire area. And when you compare A to G, what, can, what statement can you make based on the assumptions we have? Again, because of non-satiety, we know A must be preferred over G. So in these two quadrants, you know very well. <clears throat> and you can compare commodity bundles relative to A. Now consider a point like this. Let's call this H. Here what you have is more clothing and less food. So how would you rank A with H? We just do not know. It is only up to the consumer to tell us whether A is preferred over H or H is preferred over A or the consumer may tell us that he gets equal level of satisfaction from these two commodity bundles or this person is indifferent, I stands for indifferent, between A and H. Similarly, consider a point like G. Here again, this person can make a decision and say that he is equally satisfied between J and A. Now, so in these two quadrants, what you find is where you have points like J and H, it is entirely possible that the consumer may be equally satisfied with different commodity bundles. And if we join points like J, A, and H, what we get is a collection of points where the consumer gets the same level of satisfaction from different commodity bundles. And for one person, this curve is called indifference curve. 
And if you're looking at the whole community, we can call this community indifference curve. So here is a formal definition of indifference curve. What is an indifference curve? It is simply a collection of points representing different commodity bundles that give the same level of satisfaction to a consumer. And based on this diagram that we had drawn on the previous slide, we are now able to state the first property of indifference curves, and that is an indifference curve is usually downward sloping. And that simply means you'll have to give up something in order to gain something. Now look at the following diagram. This has two indifference curve. The green one is IC1 and the red one is IC2. And how do we compare these two curves? IC2 we know is further away from the origin relative to IC1. And in order to make that comparison, what we do is consider points like A, which is on IC1, and a point like B, which is on IC2. When you compare B to A, what you find is this person has the same amount of food, which is three units. And under B, this person has four units of clothing relative to two units of clothing under A. Or in other words, a point like B, which is on a nice indifference curve called IC2, must be preferred over A. Why? Because of non-satiety. Or in other words, what this implies is an indifference curve like IC2, IC2 would imply higher level of satisfaction relative to IC1. And this becomes the second property of indifference curve and that is an indifference curve or IC in short further away from the origin implies higher level of satisfaction. The opposite is true as well and that is an indifference curve closer to the origin implies lower level of satisfaction. The third property of indifference curves is two indifference curves can never intersect. It is just not possible. In order to show that this will happen is what we do is we use a method called proof by contradiction and that is we assume whatever cannot happen actually happens. So here what I have is two indifference curves IC1 and IC2 and these two curves intersect and Consider the following. <clears throat> Points A and C lie on the same indifference curve IC1. And by the definition of indifference curve, this must be true, that this person must be indifferent between commodity bundles A and C. Now look at the following. Commodity bundle B and A lie on IC2. So by definition, this must be true as well. That is, this person must be indifferent between A and B. And because of transitivity, this must be true as well. That is, this person is indifferent between B and C. Now you look at these commodity bundles B and C. In C you find this person has more clothing relative to point B and the same amount of food. So more clothing under C relative to B and same amount of food. And what this means is this is just not possible. Why? Because of non-satiety. Because under C, this person has more clothing and no less of food. And because of non satiety C must be preferred over B. And hence, this is not possible. Or in other words, two indifference curves can never intersect. This is the third property of indifference. The fourth 
property of indifference curves is an indifference curve is convex to the origin. The shape that you see of this indifference curve, if you are looking at this from the origin, this is what we mean by convexity. Now consider the following. Suppose you go down from B to A and then from A to C. Now look at the following. When you move from B to A, by how many units has your consumption of clothing gone up? It's by one unit. And when you move from A to C, on by how many units your consumption of clothing has gone up? Again, by one unit. Now compare how much food you give up when you move from B to A and compare it to how much food you give up when you move from A to C. And what you find is you are willing to give up less and less food when you decide to increase consumption of clothing by one unit. Or in other words, when you move down the curve, what is happening to the slope of the curve? It must be becoming smaller and smaller in terms of absolute value. Or in other words, the curve must be becoming flatter and flatter. And so here, this is what we mean by convexity. Convexity simply means that as one goes down the curve, the absolute value of slope declines or the curve becomes flatter and flatter. We know what convexity means and for an indifference curve to be convex to the origin, what we require is the absolute value of slope must decline as we move down an indifference curve or the curve itself becomes flatter and flatter. The term for slope of indifference curve is marginal rate of substitution between clothing and food. And since we'll be using it again and again, we can abbreviate marginal rate of substitution between clothing and food as MRSCF. And what is the slope of an indifference curve or how would you formally define it using the technical term MRSCF and that is MRSCF is the amount of food that you are willing to give up and have the same level of satisfaction when you increase consumption of clothing. And remember, MRSCF is simply the slope of the indifference curve. And so as a ratio, MRSCF will be change in food divided by change in C. And since the indifference curve is, neg is downward sloping, the slope must be negative or MRSCF must have a negative. Thus, convexity of indifference curve is based on the absolute value of slope declining. And we know the slope is referred to as MRSCF for an indifference curve. Or in other words, convexity of indifference curves is based on diminishing MRSCF. And what does this mean? As you have more and more clothing, the absolute value of MRSCF declines or when you move down the indifference curve, the absolute value of MRSCF declines. Or you can reword this as follows. As you have more and more clothing, you are less and less willing to give up food. And you should think about this. Why does this happen? If you have more and more of one good, why, are, why do you become less and less willing to give up the other good. So convexity of indifference curve is based on diminishing marginal rate of substitution between the two. Here is a list of properties of indifference curve and this is what we have come up with. There are four of them. Thank you for your time.